What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one daily show for the Chicago Bears. I'm holding down for C-Dub and Bobby, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about some unsolicited hate coming the way of the Chicago Bears from a former NFL quarterback. We're also going to talk about how the offensive line, even though with the depth chart was released yesterday, may not be finalized. We'll get into all that and more on today's Chicago Bears Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bears fans, thank you for joining on the daily episode. We're getting closer and closer to opening day for the Chicago Bears. We do have a lot of football coming up tonight, which I know a lot of you guys are probably excited about if you watch football in general like me. But we're going to talk about our Chicago Bears right now. Now, unfortunately, it looks like we got a little bit of hate coming our way from Dominique Foxworth. Um, he said on his ESPN show that th- that Justin Fields should request a trade due to the lack of the Chicago Bears putting weapons around him. Now, listen, it seems like as of everything right now, a lot of hate's being thrown towards the Chicago Bears. A lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, People who don't pay attention to the team, actually, I bet you Dominique Foxworth hasn't even watched a single down of Chicago Bears uh, 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 basketball, football during the course of the preseason. Now, one of the things that he pointed out is that the cap situation is messed up and that Ryan Poles had a Jeff Bezos-like spend uh, money to spend in free agency next year. Listen. This is why I hate the national media. And listen, as we go towards the regular season, I'm not paying any more attention. This will probably be the last topic, unless it's actually football related to what happens on the field, that I will cover anything else from the lamestream national media when it comes to uh, to our football team. But Dominique Foxworth coming out is just another name that come, that says things about the Bears without really knowing what's going on. Yes, we know Ryan Poles has a lot of a lot of money coming up. And how is that a messed up situation? I don't understand. That's how you know that he does not pay attention to what's going on, that the Bears have a messed up cap situation. We have one of the best cap situations going into the next offseason in the NFL. And that is why the people who criticize and talk about the Bears not making certain moves, not make like this, it goes back to like how the mindset some fans have that they want to see every offseason a team make a bunch of moves. What Ryan Poles has done this season. I and a lot of Bears fans have come around to. He drafted very well. When you look at the amount of rookies that are going to be playing for the Chicago Bears in this upcoming season, he could have had one of the best drafts in recent memory for the Chicago Bears if all these starters do stick, develop, and turn into something heading into next season. And yes, d- does Justin Fields have the names on paper at wide receiver that some of the other NFL quarterba- quarterbacks have? No. We all know that, but to say they've done nothing and what they've brought in and veterans on that offensive line with the way they keep trying that offensive line with uh, David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, with them changing the offensive scheme to more so not only protect Justin Fields, but to be run heavy because of how this team's made up. All this stuff that people are throwing towards the Chicago Bears comes from people who don't pay attention to the team, don't pay attention to the franchise, haven't watched a single down of Chicago Bears football, and they need to shut the fuck up. Period. And I'm sorry for cussing. I've been trying to get my my cursing down on sports shows, but this this is a time where it's needed. They need to shut the hell up. Period. Dominique Foxworth, who played five years in the NFL, shut the hell up. Continue being the me the, the media person that you are. That's what you are now. And stop talking about teams that you have not paid a lick of attention to trying to generate headlines. I'm tired of my team being used for these whack ass content creators that don't have content that don't spend the time to actually watch the team but want to speak on something they don't fucking understand this is chicago stop speaking on stuff you don't understand this team is going to surprise some people it's going to surprise some people and as far as what ryan poles is building towards the future i think as a fandom we're starting to see that picture we're starting to see what ryan poles mindset was with this season give a lot of prove it deals see if something sticks have a lot of opportunity to maybe develop some people that may be cost saving measures and bargain bargains for us in the future if they do pan out but as far as the constant criticism around the chicago bears because they didn't go out and get a and spend a bunch of money on a big name wide receiver that isn't that even then is not going to turn this team into much more than what it was already going to be, need to shut the hell up. That's what needs to happen. You guys got to shut the hell up and watch 
football. Stop, stop, stop spending time on narratives. Stop generate trying to generate clicks on your whack ass shows. Stop it. That's the Bears aren't the team to do that for you. And we and I can't wait till this team starts playing football and we can actually just talk about the football that's on the field and stop with these idiots speculating. So I may say I'm one of those idiots speculating, but you know what it is, what it is there. All right, so off of that, I had to, I'm sorry, I'm not going to really, I promise you, we're getting football, not going to be spending a lot more time on the lamestream media. I'm not going to be doing it because there are a bunch of idiots that don't pay attention to what's actually going on with this team. But let's talk about an update, and this is a surprising one that came, well, let me not say super surprising, but there are now, seems like in practice yesterday, that with the return of Lucas Patrick, that he actually did play some minutes at the guard, and Tevin Jenkins was regulated to being in certain drills to being back with the second team. And we've already talked about, I talked about yesterday, I think a couple of days ago as well, that the that the offensive line, the coaching staff was looking at two different combinations with the offensive line, one that had Lucas Patrick starting at center, snapping the ball, and one that had him starting at right guard, moving Tevin Jenkins back to the bench. Now, it seems like that may that may be something that's happening, that may be something that they're that they're preparing for, but even if they are, it's not it's not long term. It's not long term. This is just for Lucas Patrick to be able to snap the ball if he can if and when he can. Tevin Jenkins is moving back into the starting lineup. But it does seem like even though they released the depth chart that there may be some chances. This one's coming from ESPN's Courtney Cronin, again, another media person, but it is what it is is that it seemed like uh, Patrick was getting those reps at right guard in individual drills, and there may be a chance, a chance that Tevin Jenkins may not start week one against the 49ers as Lucas Patrick it pr- repairs that hand to be able to snap the ball. And the Bears probably are just preparing for all scenarios in case that he that he Sunday he wakes up, there's some soreness in the hand, they don't want to risk it. What are they going to do? I am of the mindset, as many of you guys did say in the in the uh, comment section, is if Lucas Patrick can't snap the ball. Just let him continue to sit down. Let Tevin Jenkins be in this position, continue to develop. Let him keep his starting position, and I understand that. Ultimately, the Bears are going to do whatever they think is going to give them the best opportunity and chance to win the game on Sunday against the 49ers. And so I guess we'll remain to be seen, but there is a slight chance. But like I said, even if it does happen, this is not long-term implications. It does not mean that Tevin Jenkins has fallen out of the starting lineup or down the depth chart permanently. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just means that they're doing and rejiggering some things so that Lucas Patrick can start because they see, regardless if he's at the center or at right guard, they see having him out there as one of the best opportunities for them to beat the San Francisco 49ers. So now, with that being said, in talking about the 49ers, what are some of the things that we need to look out for going into that game? Well, the Bears are 1-7 in in their last eight season openers. So hopefully, we can correct that ship and beat the team. Now, keep in mind, we lost two of the last three games against the 49ers as well. Now, these are way different teams now than what they were before. Hopefully, they can break that streak and they can come in, have a better season or opener than what we've had for the majority of the last eight years. I really do hope this season does start off. And the matchup between Justin Fields and Trey Lance, we're going to get into this in more detail when we do our our actual preview for the game, which I think is going to release Saturday. We'll be on the lookout for that. But both First round picks last season. They could have easily swapped positions. We could have Trey Lance and, and Justin Fields could be on the 49. But at the end of the day, it shook out the way it is. But continue to see these second year quarterbacks in a matchup to begin the season to see where Justin Fields matches up is going to be big. Now, something that I did talk about the other day is Jalen Johnson saying that he is ready for his matchup with Debo Samuel. Keep in mind, Debo Samuel in our last game against the 49ers had 171 yards receiving. The Bears are going to have to get that together. And with the uh, the acquisitions that we've made that are going to be in this Bears secondary, I trust that we're going to have a better showing in that game than what we've had and not let Debo Samuel hopefully dance all over us. How does Matt Eberflus coach his first real NFL game? We've gotten taste of it. We know that the, that the playbook now was very limited. They were really using a very small portion of what's a much larger playbook. What does that offense look like? Does the defense stay as Discipline is what they have to keep those those penalties and things like that down. Does that does the, what we saw from this defense in the preseason hold true going into the regular season? If it does, I've already been very boisterous of it. I think we have a top 10 defense on our hands potentially by the end of the season if they do. The discipline, the execution, the hits concept, the just being around the ball, hopefully forcing turnovers. What does that look like? How does Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze 
and the defensive coordinator, who I forget the defensive coordinator's name, my bad. Uh, what do they do? How does this team look in a real NFL game? The Bears are coming into that six and a half point underdogs against the 49ers at home. The Bears got, they got a, a task on their hand. They, a lot of hate being thrown their way to start this preseason and, and doubters coming in. How do they prove those wrong in the first game? We'll continue to cover it. We'll continue to monitor it. As you guys know, Fridays here are mailbag episodes. So make sure you guys get in your voicemails, get in everything that you have, any thoughts, comments, anything about the Bears season opener, about the, the Bears offseason, about the hate being thrown the Bears way, anything. If you got, a, a topic, a thought, an idea. I want to hear from you guys. Sound off in the mail back. And we actually have a new voicemail. So before we were sharing a voicemail with Chicago Bull Central, which is my other show, I've now separated it out with us heading into the season. We have our own voicemail number now. The number to call in if you want to get your thoughts in on the mail back episode that airs tomorrow on Fridays, you can text or call it. The number to do so, 773 773- 242-9336. That's 773-242-9336. If you want to follow the show, make sure you do so at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bear Central at gmail.com if you want to actually email it instead of text it. And once again, if you want to call or text the voicemail line, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. Thank you for being the best part of Chicago Bear Central. And like I like to end every episode on, bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media.